Okay, boys and girls, today we're going to learn about osmosis. The reason we do this experiment is to show how differing salt solutions affect animal cells. Or since we usually cover this subject in anatomy and physiology, how differing salt solutions affect human cells. It's important that when we replenish fluids in the body, we use fluids with the proper salt concentrations. Otherwise, this can have a negative impact on the body. The term diffusion is the movement of a substance from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. Osmosis is a term that refers to the diffusion of water across a semi-permeable or selectively permeable membrane. Tonicity is the relative concentration of solutes dissolved in a solution, which determines the direction and extent of diffusion. In other words, it's the ability of an extracellular solution to make water move into or out of a cell by osmosis or how a solution affects the shape of a cell. What I'm going to do is draw out the red blood cell demonstration where we put red blood cells in different salt solutions and see what happens to them. So I'm going to start out by drawing three beakers. In each beaker I'm going to put water. The blue line at the top represents water. Into each beaker, we're going to put red blood cells. And I'm only going to draw one representative red blood cell in each beaker. Now these red blood cells have a certain salt concentration in them, just like the cells of our body have a certain salt concentration in them. And the salt concentration inside our cells is 0.9%. Now we're going to put these red blood cells into three different solutions. The first solution I'm going to represent is an isotonic solution. Okay, isotonic. Isotonic means the solution has the same solute concentration as the solution inside the cell, which again was 0.9%. So I would represent that by drawing solute particles in the solution like so. Here we have an equal concentration of solute particles on the outside of the cell as inside the cell. Okay. You can see how these solute particles are equally spaced. Right, we have equal concentrations here. Again, isotonic means that the solute concentration on the outside of the cell is the same, iso the same, as the solute concentration on the inside of the cell. Now, in this example over here, we have a red blood cell in a 0% salt solution. Okay? This is distilled water, right? No solute particles inside that solution. Since this solute concentration on the outside of the cell is lower than what's in the red blood cell, we can say that this solution that the red blood cell is in is a hypotonic solution. Hypotonic solution. Hypo, less than, underneath. Okay. So that means the solute concentration is less than what's inside the cell. In this example over here, I'm going to draw a hypertonic solution. Now in a hypertonic solution, we're going to have a higher solute concentration than what's inside the red blood cell. Okay, and I'm going to represent that like this higher solute concentration on the outside of the cell. This would be an example of a 5% salt solution. Okay, So hypertonic indicates that this red blood cell is in a solution that has a higher solute concentration. 
Isotonic means this red blood cell is in a solution that has the same solute concentration. Hypotonic means that this red blood cell is in a solution that has a lower solute concentration. Now when we put our red blood cells into solutions like this, something's going to happen to these red blood cells. Remember that term tonicity? It refers to how a solution affects a cell. A cell membrane is kind of like the rubber membrane that makes up this balloon. Now this membrane can be tight or loose, just like the membrane of a cell. In this case, the membrane's loose because there's no air in the membrane. If I were to fill this with air, the membrane would get tighter. Now this balloon's filled with air, and you can see how tight the membrane is, how much tension is on the membrane. Now we'll be able to see when I let some of the air out of this membrane, the membrane will get looser. Osmotic solutions are solutions that promote osmosis. Different osmotic solutions will affect the cell differently. If the osmotic solution causes water to exit the cell, the cell membrane will get looser and the cell will shrink. If the osmotic solution causes water to enter the cell, the cell is going to get bigger and bigger. The cell membrane will get tighter and tighter as the cell expands. One of the things that we can say about situations like this that's always true is that water follows solute. Water is going to move toward the higher solute concentration. Normally, substances diffuse from a higher concentration to a lower concentration, down the concentration gradient. Okay? So we would expect the salt, in this case, to diffuse out of the cell. We wouldn't see any diffusion here, and then we would see the salt move into the cell in this case, moving from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. But remember, we're dealing with a red blood cell that has a selectively permeable membrane. Okay, So those solute particles are not going to be able to cross the membrane. So in order to balance the concentration of the solution, something else has to move. And that something else is going to be water. Now, in this case, water follows solute. Water is going to move toward the higher solute concentration, which means water is going to move into the cell. That cell is going to swell up, and it's going to burst. Okay, so I'll represent that like so. The poor red blood cell exploded, released its contents. Now that red blood cell is not going to work anymore. This is an example of hemolysis, or hemolysis, splitting of the red blood cell. Now in this case here, equal amounts of water will move into the cell as will out of the cell. So we're not going to get a net movement of water here. Now in this case right here, remember, water follows solute. Water is going to move toward the higher solute concentration. In this case, the higher solute concentration is outside of the cell. So water is going to move out of the cell here. When this happens, that cell is going to shrivel up. Okay? And it's going to look something like this. It's going to look spiky underneath a microscope. The term for this is crenation. So we can say that crenation will happen when a red blood cell is placed in a hypertonic solution. We can also say that hemolysis will happen when a red blood cell is placed in a hypotonic solution. When a red blood cell is placed in an isotonic solution, that red blood cell is going to be happy and it's going to be able to carry out all of its physiological processes that it normally does. If you found this video helpful, click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Don't forget to visit www.humanbodyhelp.com.